Welcome to This Week in Warframe, a series where I keep you updated on the past week of Warframe, from announcements made by DE that don't necessarily warrant their own videos to community fan art posts and updates. So without further ado, let's go over DE's announcements and news from the 18th of November to the 24th. Starting that week's episode off, we had the Nintendo Switch version of Warframe going live, so if you have a Nintendo Switch, make your account on there, and you can even migrate your PC account to your Nintendo Switch account. In terms of migrating, it is just copying it from your PC to your Nintendo Switch. There'll be two separate accounts that won't progress due to the lack of ability to crossplay. So if you do migrate your PC account to the Switch and play on the Switch from there on out, it won't progress your PC account. Now for those that just start a new account on the Nintendo Switch and you complete the Vores Prize quest, you will receive 50,000 credits, a 3-day affinity booster, an Orokin Reactor and Catalyst, and a Former. This little bonus only runs up until December 4th at 11.59pm Eastern Time, so if you are playing on the Nintendo Switch and, and haven't completed Vores Prize yet, make sure you do so to get those little bonuses. I will leave all the information for the Nintendo Switch version of Warframe in the description, so if you're interested in knowing everything about it, go down there. The Nintendo Switch version did launch with the Mask of the Revenant, which was update 23.5. There were also a number of items that were left out of the migration process, so you will not keep your Rivens, you will not keep your Arcanes, you won't keep your Acolyte mods, your Legendary Cores, or Primed Chamber. And of course, your Excalibur Prime, your Ladder Prime, and your Skarner Prime. All of those are restricted when migrating your PC account to your Nintendo account, so keep that in mind if you don't have them. Now, in terms of Rivens, there were multiple replies from DE Bear explaining the situation on why Riven mods were removed from the migration process. Now onto PC, we received Hotfix 24.0.9 which reintroduced the Elite Terra Corpus enemies into the game. You can now encounter the new harder enemies in areas or bounties that are level 30 plus, and they also made a number of changes in this Hotfix, such as improving the Kubrow and Kavat Cold Shivers, making the Synth, Reflex and Vigilante Pursuit mods into the Exilus category, so you can now place them in your Exilus slot when modding, you can now travel to any relay or town when in a relay or town. They've increased the AI spawns for the exterminate bounties. You can no longer do a cypher hack if your mower companion is already working on it. And they made updates to the UI screen. They also made a number of fixes to the conservation system and the fixes to the base game as well, all of which are up on your screen. There was also Hotfix 24.0.10, which once again brought some changes and fixes. They're up on your screen. The only notable one here was that they reduced the Corpus Osprey's dodging frequency. Next up was Tenogen Round 14 in Update 24.1. Players can now purchase new Operator cosmetics that have been made by players in the community, and they come in the form of the Gurusu Oculus, Incognito Oculus, Loomis Earpiece, Zenoru Mask Oculus and Earpiece, and a number of skins as well for your Warframe. The Warframe skins are Chroma Morkai, Equinox Divisor, Equinox Megera, Gara Zamuru, Limbo Grax, Nyx Ascophilia, Titania Lympharis, Zephyr Grax, and two Sindanas as well, which are the Styx and Tenu Sindanas, two helmets, the Loki Lupu, and Necros Sharon, and then a number of weapon skins, which come in the form of the Dagger Krubuck, Rapier Ferita, Tonfa Hades, Ion Greatsword, Carver Greatsword, Nadul Rapier, Opticor Mithra, and the Tengashan Sword skin. As for the changes made in this update, they changed the Pax Seeker Arcane Projectile from 100% impact damage to a 50% puncture and slash combo. They also made it so the Pax Seeker Projectile no longer double dips on your mods, so you won't get that extreme amount of damage from the Arcane. Now if you do see the impact icon, that is due to the forced knockback croc having the same symbol as the impact damage. They also increase the frequency at which mower companions will use the whiplash mine and the anti-grav grenade precepts. They improved the ability to pick up data keys that are in motion. They improved the orb ballas cold shiver pet animations once again. And they updated the mecha mod description and improved the AI spawn flow in the Corpus Ice Planet tileset. 
As for the fixes that were made in update 24.1 up on your screen, or once again, all the information that I talk about in this video will be linked in the description down below. We also had Hotfix 24.1.1, which brought improvements towards the Zemuru Gara skin, which was that Tenno Gen 1 introduced in 24.1, and that coincides with a later topic, which is the dimming down of the glow on Gara's glass. Now, DE Taylor did come out on Twitter and say that this is another instance of bug turned into feature, but it is just an exception and will not be the new norm for Tenno Gen skins. So just keep that in mind if you do want to see any more of this stuff in the future of Tenogen. They also increase the frequency of rare gems in the Smoke Finger offerings. The Valus pigments will now also drop from Elite and Eximus Terra variants. They made improvements to prevent fish spawning inside solar geometry in caves. And there were also changes and fixes made to the conservation system and to the base game. Once again, they're up on your screen. We then had another hotfix, which was hotfix 24.1.1.1, and that reverted some of the K-Drive performance improvements in the previous hotfix that they made. There was also fixes to Arcane Victory not triggering when using a primary weapon, and they fixed the Pack Seeker projectiles not showing up for clients. Now for console players, specifically Xbox One, the Prestige Pack 12 is now available for purchase, and you can pick that up in the in-game market or the Xbox Store, and you will get the Valkyrie Jade skin and 170 Platinum. For PlayStation 4 players, the PlayStation Plus Booster Pack 3 is available for you guys, and the pack includes 100 Platinum, 100,000 Credits, the Quanta and Quanta Obsidian skin, and a 7-day Affinity and Credit Booster. As for developer tweets, D.E. Scott also made a tweet, asking for some ideas for K-Drive mods. We also had DE George once again coming out and saying that there will be implementation of the Fortuna soundtrack into our orbiter, but there is no ETA on that information. Due to the delayed release of this This Week in Warframe episode, there is no fan art once again, so once again I do apologize for that. Anyway, if you do want to see the previous episode, a annotation is up on the screen. If you think I can improve upon the series in any way, shape, or form, make sure to leave it in a comment section down below, or your thoughts about the Nintendo Switch release of the game. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.